It's a sad, sad day for the sport of cycling. Brian Robinson, the pioneer of British cycling, passed away at 91 on 25th October, and the entire world went into mourning. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Brian's legacy and all the tributes that came pouring in after the news of his demise. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, Robinson dies at 91. Brian's death was announced by his grandson and fellow cyclist, Jake Wormersley. He tweeted that it was with great sadness that he was announcing this news. Understandably, the cyclist's family was devastated. As was the rest of the world. After all, Brian had forever cemented himself as one of the United Kingdom's greatest athletes. Next up, Robinson, the pioneer of British cycling. Brian was the winner of Britain's first ever Tour de France stages. He's widely regarded as the start of English cycling and mainstream European racing in the 1950s, and his influence cannot be overstated. Born in Yorkshire in 1930, Robinson was one of the first two Britons to finish the Tour, the other being Tony Hoare in 1955. He claimed his country's first Tour de France stage win in 1957, and then again in 1959. Then he went on to secure United Kingdom's first ever Criterium du Dauphiné when France's second toughest stage race was known as the Dauphiné Libéré. At that time, British riders almost never led these races, but Robinson became one of the leading names in the European racing circle, paving the way that would later be followed by cyclists like Tom Simpson in the 1960s. What's more, he completed his first ever Tour de France with just half a season of full-time racing at the top level. In fact, he was so shocked by the toughness of it that despite completing it, he said afterward that he had no idea men could do this to each other. His win in 1958 also happened super anticlimactically. In the transition stage to Brest, Arrigo Padovan was disqualified, which allowed the Brit to claim his win. But his second victory was no accident. 1959 was all about him. He won with a 20-minute margin one day before the end of the tour, thus forever cementing his place in cycling history. Following this, what did cycling mean to Robinson? It's no secret that it was hard to make a living as a cyclist in those times, especially if you weren't on the top of the game. But that never stopped Brian from chasing his dreams on his bicycle. He once opened up about his struggles in an interview and shared that he had to scrounge around at first to keep racing. He said that riding for a small retainer was kind of hand-to-mouth at times, even to the point that he'd often wonder if he'd win enough to be able to eat. Brian revealed that getting to races meant taking buses or trains, and sometimes he'd ride 40 kilometers on his bike with a haversack on his shoulder just to make it there. He sold his car to pay some expenses and also continued to work for his father. He said that if there was no prize money in his pocket, he'd have eaten turnips out of the field, but he powered through it all. He reached the highest of highs in the sport, the first ever Brit to do so, and he'll forever be remembered as one of the greatest to ever do it. Coming up, it wasn't an easy journey for Robinson. Nowadays, all these British cyclists are among the best prepared in the world with all the leading technology to help them. But the situation was significantly different in Brian's era. Back in those days, riders would get up at 6 a.m., have steak and rice for breakfast, and then race for 11 hours. Even the water supplies with cyclists were so limited that they'd sometimes stop en route to grab a drink from a shop. They didn't have all the luxuries riders enjoy now. Robinson ate bananas, grapes, and rice pudding before racing. He opened up later that he used to struggle to adjust to the noisy spectators on the sidelines. He told The Independent in 2014 that people would run alongside him and yell and scream at him, and he always found that very hard. Despite all of that, he single-handedly changed the course of the game for his countrymen. Lastly, what could have been? Before turning to professional cycling, Robinson represented Team Great Britain at the 1952 Olympics in Helsinki. He showed great intent and determination all throughout his cycling journey, but he was forced to retire super early at just the age of 33 after continuing stomach issues that prevented him from reaching more highs in his career. As a result of that, he could never reach his full potential. But his influence over the next generation of Britain's cyclists can be felt until now. He was an inspiration for riders racing abroad. After his retirement, Brian returned to work as a builder in his hometown of Murfield, Yorkshire, but he remained super close to the sport. He was the president of the Dave Rayner Fund, which helps Britons race abroad, and he even played a big part in bringing Tour de France to Yorkshire eight years ago. He could also often be spotted out training on his bike until his final years. Now let's talk about tributes for Brian Robinson. First and foremost, the Tour de France pays homage, as they should. The official Twitter account for the race tweeted out their condolences for Robinson. The tweet called the late cyclist a pioneer and trailblazer of British cycling and highlighted his accomplishments with the race. With his win all those years back and as an ambassador of the Great Depart in Yorkshire. It ended with best wishes for the family through this hard time. It also has a very cool picture of Robinson cycling when he was young. Up next, Brian Cookson chimes in. The former president of UCI Cycling and British Cycling also shared his thoughts on Twitter. Cookson stated that he was very sad to hear about the passing of Robinson, but he had lived a great life. He called him a true pioneer of the sport. He wished condolences to Brian's family and ended his tweet with, rest in peace. Moving on, Ned Bolton on Robinson. Bolton 
Leaving, the acclaimed cycling writer and presenter also only had good things to say. He said this was the saddest news. Ned called Brian a fierce competitor, a trailblazer, a generous soul, funny as hell and kinder than you could imagine. He expressed that Yorkshire, England had lost a great legend. We're sure these feelings were echoed in the entire cycling circle. He was a superstar. Ned also posted a picture of him riding through England and everybody in Ilkley was going to remember him together that night. What a gesture for one of the greatest cyclists in history. Coming up, Ineos Grenadiers speak out. In case you're not aware, that's one of the biggest teams in cycling. The team released a statement saying that they joined the world of the sport in sending condolences and love to friends and family of Robinson. He was a true legend of the sport. It's utterly heartwarming to see some of the biggest names in the game come together to send thoughts and prayers to Brian and his loved ones. We know he's smiling up there in heaven. Next, fans pay tribute to Robinson. As soon as the news about his death came out, fans took to social media to express their condolences for his family and gratitude for the man he was. One fan tweeted that his heart broke a little when he heard the news. He wrote that some of the fondest memories of his childhood were seeing Brian win the Tour de France in the late 50s, and this felt like a personal loss to him. Another fan commented Brian would forever remain the pioneer of British cycling, and his legacy will live on for generations to come. That couldn't be more true. Twitter users sent their best wishes to the Robinson family. One fan wrote Brian was a legend of the sport, but more than that, he was a great, great man, and this was a tragic loss for Yorkshire. Finally, fans recall meeting Robinson. Of course, many fans also shared their personal stories of meeting the legend. One Twitter user recalled meeting him twice, both times when he was promoting the sport of cycling, and she said that he couldn't have been nicer to her. She said he was a lovely man, and the heavens got a new angel. Another fan remembered he met him ahead of the 2014 Great Depart, and Brian was the highlight of his trip to Yorkshire. He shared that the late cyclist was an amazing person to have a conversation with, and he was glad he got to see him in real life. It's no doubt that he refined what it meant to be a Brit cyclist, but Robinson sounds like a wonderful person, full of life and love. Rest in peace, Brian. You'll be terribly missed in the cycling world and beyond. And that's a wrap for this video. What's your favorite memory of Brian Robinson? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Goodbye and see you in the next one.